Dharma Master Zheng Yan recently arrived in Yunlin and Jiayi to attend year and blessing ceremonies. In Cambodia, such volunteers distribute rice to more than 20,000 farmers. Selamat datang ke Dahel Line, saya Sam Menggang. Terima kasih mengetahui sesi berita kita. Dharma Master Cheng Yen has arrived in Yunling and Jiayi to attend year and blessing ceremonies. Among the newly certified Tsuji volunteers, many are children of senior Tsuji volunteers. Let's take a look. At the year and blessing ceremonies in Yunling and Jiayi, senior volunteers have passed on their experiences. <laughs> Li Yongda and Guo Jiaju have volunteered with their children since they were in elementary school. This year, their daughter has become certified and their son is undergoing training. After they volunteered, they will share their joy with us. I questioned them, is it really that fun? Teaching by example is better than lecturing. Instead of telling my child about life principles, I read a set of example for her. Liu Huirong has brought her daughter to be certified. Since her parents are volunteers, she's eager to contribute her share as a young person. I will do whatever they tell me to do. She must work on the Ji path by herself. Therefore, I have there for everything except her shoes. Having received her mother's volunteer uniform, she knows how to do good deeds. There is another person that changed because of compassion. Zhou Rongnan has been influenced by his wife and dedicated himself to volunteering. For more than 10 years, I seized the opportunities and followed my wife to do Tsuji's work. Tsuji volunteers seize every moment to walk the Bodhisattva path. Dalin Tsuji Hospital's 20th anniversary of hospice care marks the journey of doctors and nurses caring for patients with love. Besides providing long-term care to seniors, seniors were also introduced to community service, helping others in need. Looking back at the hospice care service with Daling Tsuji Hospital, for 20 years, multiple events were held in order to fulfill the dreams of patients. When everyone thinks of hospice care, people think of passing away along with some unhappy emotions. But actually, many volunteers and clowns came to care for our patients, giving them positive energy. For five years, hospital efficiency has been improving. An example would be at the dialysis center, where once 75 boxes of medicine were carried manually, now the boxes are put onto trolleys. Efficiently using space and transforming the work environment, the eco-friendly actions helps the environment. We try to reuse resources as much as we can. For example, this banner, we only have to replace the stickers in order to use it again. Recycling volunteer Granny Aju has been doing recycling for 20 years, but the worsening of her legs caused mobility issues. After doing physical rehabilitation at the daycare center, she is living a fulfilling life. She talks about not having education as she can only do labor work, but when she's here, she even teaches me how to write and draw. Ensuring that hospitals connect with long-term care centers, as of now, there are 31 long-term care centers, providing care to seniors while making sure they live a happy and fulfilling life. Yang Minghui, who had a stroke three years ago, was paralyzed below the neck and relies on a respirator. Usually, patients who suffer from this kind of stroke has a slim chance of recovery. Fortunately, with the delicate care of the doctors in Hualien Tsuji Medical Center, a miracle happened. Let's take a look at a story. Wo 原本以为休息一天就好
，然后隔天早上还是不舒服。Forty-two-year-old Yang Minghui was once a working mother and has two children. In 2018, she suffered a stroke. After being sent to the hospital for emergency treatment, a stent was inserted into her brain, and that saved her life. Ever since then, she has to rely on a caregiver and a wheelchair for her daily activities. When young people have a stroke, the first reason might be family inheritance. The second reason might be long-term high blood pressure. The third reason is overworking. For example, a person who has been very busy for a few days and the body does not have enough rest. When this happens, the body's inflammatory factor will increase, which will lead to the blood vessels to inflame. In the end, the blood vessels will either rupture or get blocked. After trying various treatments for over 20 days, her condition did not improve. Her family members grabbed their last hope and transferred Yang Minghui from Taipei to Hualien City Medical Center. Back then, when she was in Taipei, they have already installed two stands in her brain. When she came over to Hualien, they installed another one. When we were at Taipei, we were very conflicted because the doctors asked us that do we want to give up treatment as her condition was very critical. But it has only been a few days since she suffered from the stroke, so we were not able to accept the fact that there's no more hope. So we just tried with whatever chances we have. Her problem is at the brainstem. The brainstem collects all the major nervous systems like the motor nerves and the sensory nerves. For sensory nerves, signals are transmitted from our limbs to the brainstem and then to the brain. And for motor nerves, signals are transmitted from the brain through the brainstem and then to our limbs. For her case, it happened that the left part of her brainstem, half of her brainstem, lacks blood pressure because her blood vessels were all blocked, causing her brainstem to be damaged, and the nerve signals are unable to pass down to her limbs. For this medicine, it will fuse into our nerve cells, increasing its metabolism rate. With that being said, the nerve signal transmission will become faster. It will reconnect motor nerves together. For example, it can connect the nerves in charge of breathing, eye movement, movement of the tongue, swallowing, and limbs all together. 这些舌头吞咽啊，手脚动的神经再把它连接起来。妈，等一下，你好，他都好吗？好，做完要来进步。来，手手握起来看看，用力，嗯，很棒，再打开。嗯，来，可以再握哈，好，可以再打开。你现
There is a saying that points out that illness comes as fast as wind or fire and recovery is slow. So, when illness is about to go away, it will be slow. We encourage our patients this way. They must undergo treatment actively and not give up on treatment. In Cambodia, Batambang had experienced drought and floods last year. Such volunteers continue to distribute rice to more than 20,000 affected farmers. Let's take a look. Two months after the flood, the city continues to hold distributions in Bentaben. The last two distributions have been held in Bavon and Kosakuratla, with the largest number of affected residents. I received Sichi supplies 20 some years ago. That distribution was held at a school, and many people benefited. It is good affinity that I can receive Sichi's help again. I'm very happy. My petty field has been flooded. I have many children and we have been going hungry. It's good that we have received rice and no longer need to go hungry. Volunteers have bought the rice locally to be distributed to affected residents. According to family sizes, volunteers give out one to three bags of rice. Local residents have experienced flooding. We take resources locally and need to reuse it locally. We need to help them with the local economy so the residents can continue to farm and work. To follow pandemic prevention measures, volunteers have chosen an outdoor venue. However, as much manpower is needed, the military has come to help out. We appreciate Sichi's help. These residents face hardship after the floods. Although we are not among the eight recipients, we are willing to help everyone with our abilities. After the distribution, volunteers also conduct home visitations. Solitary Grandma Hao Thon has not used lighting equipment for decades. As volunteers deliver solar panels, there is finally light in her house. I had received 50 kilograms of rice before. I did not expect that after 20-some years. You have come to help us again in the aftermath of the floods. This time, besides giving us supplies, you also give us a solar panel so that there will be a light in my house. As volunteers deliver solar panels to Grandma Hawthorne's house, there is finally light in her house. They have also brought hope to other affected residents. In Sri Lanka, Tichi volunteers have established their own vegetarian brand and started selling meal boxes. All the profits will then be used to provide food for the local old folks home. Here's more. Deep fried meatballs and fried eggplants. Can you imagine that all these delicious dishes are vegetarian cuisines? Colombo Tichi volunteers established their very own vegetarian brand, using delicious delicacies to encourage the public to become vegetarians. Besides promoting vegetarianism, there's also another reason. We hope to encourage more people to purchase our vegetarian meal boxes. All the profits will then be used to provide meals for the seniors in a nearby old folks' home. The more meal boxes they sell, the same amount of food will then be sent to the old folks' home. After knowing the good cost, the public also supported enthusiastically. So I, uh, I know that they are having this fundraising project. It's a good thing. And also, uh, though we are not vegetarians, we once in a way we have vegetarian, and we do like uh, their uh, meals, and we liked it, and uh, so we like to continue here. Although the project has just started, there are over 200 people supporting this great cause. With the help of delicious dishes, eating a vegetarian diet is not difficult at all. 
In Keelong, a single mother's bedroom was broken, causing the family of three to sleep in their living room for months. She used all her savings trying to repair, but her money was cheated by construction workers. Recently, such volunteers head over to help renovate her bedroom. Take a look. The small living room is both a living space during the day and a place to sleep at night. Although there is a bedroom in the home, it has been eaten by termites. The mother and two daughters have been sleeping on the floor like this for several months. From the 2nd of March, I encountered shady construction workers and have had to sleep on the living room floor for a while. I don't want my child to sleep in this environment as I'm afraid it's also bad for her health. Miss Wu, who is divorced from her husband, has to take two children alone as she stays at home without pay. She is worried that her daughter will have to sleep on the floor for a long time and it may affect her health. So she actively sought help from Ziji and after an evaluation, volunteers came to do repairs. The second floor is where her master bedroom is located. The master bedroom needs to be repaired because of termites. There is little space for repair as teamwork and cooperation are needed. We had to move things to another warehouse and do repairs here. The volunteers cleared out all the items originally piled on the second floor to free up space for carpenters to work. Then it took three working days to tidy up all the repaired areas one by one. If we didn't fix it for her, the mother and her daughters can only sleep on the floor of the living room downstairs. Their quality of life would not be really ideal. We couldn't bear to see it, so we took up this case at the end of the year. I just happened to have time to help her repair their home and have a better quality of life. If I'm alone and have to take care of two children in our present condition, maybe everything will always be messy over there. Sister helped me to contact a thousand people who helped me move those things. Now it is neater and I feel very happy. After finishing the house repairs, the warmth of the home has returned. Volunteers also promise to continue their care as his mother and two daughters will have no future worries in their lives. In Taiwan, the volunteers at Yuli Recycling Station have an average age of more than 70 years old. Local volunteers have brought knee pads and gloves for them, hoping that the senior volunteers can stay safe and healthy. Despite the low temperature, recycling volunteers in Yuli are sorting the recyclables. As they want to organize the recyclables, people have thrown out before the Lunar New Year. 83-year-old Zhong Xiulan rode her electric motorcycle for 20 minutes to come here. She has been doing recycling for more than 10 years. Joyful. We need to be joyful as we volunteer. Don't be depressed. Really, recycling volunteers have an average age of more than 70 years so They do recycling on Saturdays. Mr. Cho, who has just retired, has also dedicated himself to recycling. He's happy to be the seniors' feet. I help the seniors. We move the items they pick out so the elderly can sort them again. <laughs> We see recycling volunteers as our role models and we learn from their spirit and perseverance. In the future, I want to be just like them. Seniors are treasures in the community. Volunteers express their gratitude and best wishes, hoping they will take care of their health as they protect the environment. Scraping is a highly precise metal working technique, but the professionals behind the art of scraping gradually decrease as they age. Now, related departments have started promoting scraping, hoping that this valuable skill set may pass on to more people. Cutting beautiful marks on the metallic surface, this technique, scraping, is necessary in building a precise machine. This technique was developed thousands of years ago. Now scraping is mostly done on machinery, maintaining the metal. In the early era, scraping was used to flatten wood surfaces during carpenting. In order to create precise machinery, human correction involvement is required. In the age of technological advancement AI, scraping seemed to be more traditional. Let's do an experiment. This one pushes tight, and that one light to push. 
Now when I push the heavy one, it shows me one kilogram. Let me reset it to zero and push the lighter one. And it shows four kilograms of force. Now look at this. Upon close examination, one is flat and one still has metal pieces. The friction of both tools proved to be vastly different. I should say the machine follows our orders to maintain the metal, but it still depends on our observation. Machinery cannot observe the minor details, only humans can. On the machine, the metal surface is laid out in order for the machinery to precisely move, scraping the surfaces. With lubricant as a medium, the machine experiences less friction while working. Machines can do precise work, but in order to put the right components and to perfectly tune this machine, manual labor is required in order to ensure the accuracy of machinery. Repeating the same movements every day, a hand scraper takes about three years to become a professional. Sometimes, a flat surface requires a month's work. Though it's repetitive and highly paid, less people apply for this job. Machines cannot produce high accuracy, like one out of 1,000, but hand scrapers can produce results up to one out of 10,000. Taiwan is known for its precise machinery, especially in the field of scraping. In the machine industry, we have reached the trillion mark by 2017, becoming the third trillion new Taiwanese dollar industry in Taiwan. Within this, the machine tool industry ranks fifth in the global exports. In order to pass on the art of hand scraping, Su Chunrong started a class to teach this technique. Now, he has over 2,000 students. Ten years ago, when I started this hand scrapping class, we were helping the industry who are introducing this technique to students systematically. After coating the metal, the traces of metal pieces can be seen. Now, students are following the teacher's movements, hoping to learn the know-how. You have to put pressure on the same point. If you put too much pressure, you will cut too deep into the object. It's not only about hands, but more about our body's balance. Scrapping is a technique. It is also an art form. The long-lasting and exhausting movements are a testament to the endurance and patience of a student. It's exhausting because your body has to be like this, repeating the same movements. You have to pressure on your knees and use it as a brake. Hand scrapers scrape the surfaces of precise machinery, making sure that the machine functions well while ensuring this ancient technique may pass on to future generations. In central Taiwan, such volunteers have begun the annual winter distribution for the carry recipients. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you and goodbye.